Building a reasonable gaming PC. This gaming computer cost me roughly about $500. It can play competitive titles at 1080p with high FPS numbers, even AAA title. Before we go any further, let's have a word from today's sponsor. If you guys need a cheap and affordable Windows key, then today's video sponsor has you covered. Head to their website at supercdk.com, find your desired Windows key that even have Windows 11. Use the discount code SPLA and it drops the price all the way down to $16 for a legit Windows key. Check the links down below and let's get back to the video. The used and new computer market has been through a lot of ups and downs, but it's slowly starting to level out, so today I'm bringing you a gaming PC that you can replicate. Well, somewhat. And it even has an upgrade path. For the CPU, we're going to be going with the Ryzen 5 3600X. This is still a solid 6-core processor for 1080p gaming. Yes, it's outperformed by the newer Ryzen and newer Intel chips, but you can find this for pretty cheap now. It's 6 cores and 12 threads with a base clock speed of 3.8GHz, and you can always overclock this CPU. I'm pairing it with a pretty budget-friendly board. It's a Gigabyte A520MS2H. It's not B550 or X570, but this budget board still allows you to upgrade to Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. Yes, it is a very budget friendly board. It doesn't have the best VRMs, but it still supports 1M.2 and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, up to 5100 megahertz. Have you guys seen cars like the Disney show? Well, I really loved it as a kid growing up and obviously I love Lightning McQueen and you know, he, he was fast. And as you guys know, Ryzen loves faster RAM. We're going with the sweet spot at 3200 megahertz. It's a two by eight gigabyte kit for a total of 16 gigabytes. It's a Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. You don't have to go with an RGB kit. Really any two by eight gigabyte kit at 3200 megahertz will do perfectly fine. I'll have some link down below. For storage, I'm keeping it super simple and clean. We're going with an NVMe drive to take advantage of the M.2 slot on the motherboard. It's the Team Group MP33 512 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. The read and write speeds are decent for what it is and it even has a five year manufacturer warranty. They have the movement model, which has faster speeds if that's something you want as well. I've used this SSD multiple times in the past and I'm choosing to use it again because it is a solid budget drive and it can be found for around $40 to $50 depending on the time of purchase, but most of the time it is on sale on Amazon. The last and final part for the motherboard is a CPU cooler. I'm using the ID Cooling SE214 XT ARGB, pretty long name. It's a tower style cooler, it has a 120mm ARGB fan, and overall a pretty clean design. Obviously the goal of this PC build was to keep a budget in mind, but I didn't really have a set budget, so choosing the case was kind of hard. I wanted something with airflow, and then I also wanted something aesthetically pleasing, all while keeping in mind my motherboard is micro ATX. I would have liked to buy a used case on my local market, but no one was selling any. So I settled on the Antec NX200M, it's a micro ATX form factor, has a mesh front for airflow and a tempered glass side panel. Only bad thing, it only has one included fan. It was a bit more than I wanted to spend for a black box, but it had a 5% off coupon and I picked it up for $71.44. Since it only has the one included fan, I obviously needed more. I was debating going the good old RGB route, but as you know by now, I'm not trying to spend a whole lot. I opted with two fractal design fans that I had in this big box of fans. They are technically free because I didn't put a value on basic fans. The good old GPU, what's a gaming PC without it? The GPU I'm going with is a GTX 1070. I remember just a few months back, these were costing upwards of $500. Sadly, I overpaid for mine based off the current market price, but you know, oh well, it just happened. I picked it up for around $200 and they are selling for around $150 on eBay. I got the EVGA model and it is super clean. Since it was a used GPU, I'm definitely going to clean it and repaste it to give it the best chance. The PC is done. Building in this Antec case was pretty easy to build in. What really helped was the power supply since it was semi-modular and I didn't have to use any useless cables. <coughs> Molex. It is the EVGA 600 watt and I picked it up for $30 on EVGA B-Stock. Let's play some games. First game up is some good old Apex Legends. We're just testing in 1080p. 110 FOV and kind of everything else on low because uh, it's an FPS game and you want you want to get the most FPS uh, so it can be competitive, you know? <laughs> to be honest, I haven't been playing much Apex. I haven't even been playing much games. Like, keeping it 100 with you right now. The next games we test, if I'm in different clothes, it's because it's a new day because I work soon and I don't think I have enough time to test all the games in one day. So I'm just trying to get it done as I go. Alrighty, I am Jumpmaster. In the air, we're sitting at around 110 FPS. The temperatures are pretty good. When I clean the GPU though, 
the thermal paste wasn't even bad, so I kind of replaced it for no reason, but it's always good to replace it. We might die here. Ugh. Oh yeah, someone's right on me. Um. Oh my, oh no, everything feels so weird. Oh, I'm moving so slow. Oh, come here. Oh, my settings. Bruh. Guys. <laughs> oh no, I'm so trash. All, all my keybinds are on my, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, that was a bad first game. <laughs> But hey, we had some uh, pretty stable FPS. Let's fi let's fix my mouse settings and all my settings and uh, we'll run it back. Round two, let's go. Landing right on the floor. Do we get a gun? Yeah, we get a little alternator and a, uh, oh wow, I don't have a lot of mouse room. I just hit the PC. Oh my goodness. This Wraith is so dead. What? Where the hell? Where'd you go? Kind of hard to see. I'm probably like a foot, like two feet away from this monitor. Oh, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Oh, I'm so dead. I was healing. Alrighty, the first game up, you know, some good old Fortnite. Right off the bat in the pregame lobby. Uh, normally it lags in this pregame lobby for me, but staying pretty smooth around 150 FPS. All right, right off the bat, in the air, sitting at the 150 FPS, 160. Jumping straight down, uh, was around 40. Everything is staying pretty chilly though. We're using around eight gigabytes of RAM. And yes, the RAM is set to the 3200 megahertz. Yeah, the GPU and CPU, both around 60C. GPU's at 65, CPU's at 58 right now. All right, these are the visual settings we're rocking with. 1080p full screen, unlimited FPS, 3D res at 100%, view distance at medium, everything else low or off, uh, V-Sync off, motion blur off, show FPS off, rendering mode, DirectX 11, and then allow multi-threaded rendering is on, and then everything else is off. I was watching some old Fortnite clips, <laughs> you know, just last night chilling in bed, and uh, just kind of popped up on YouTube. I th actually, I think it was on Instagram Reels or something like that. But man, it just reminded me how much fun this game used to be. Let me know in the comments. Did you guys like really love this game? Because I, kn I know I did. <laughs> I know a lot of people did. It was it was a good game, man, in, in its prime days. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's someone right here. They're running. Get back here, fool. <laughs> Looks like some fools died over here. Oh my! I'm dead. I'm freaking dead, bro. Where's he at? I ended up testing two games from my AAA titles, one of which was Borderlands 3 at 1080p with high settings, and it got an average FPS of 69. Nice. The next AAA title was Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also at 1080p with high settings as well. And that one got an average FPS of around 90. I would have tested Cyberpunk, but I don't have it. For competitive gaming at 1080p, and if you want to reach those high FPS numbers, this PC handles it really well. Apex Legends, it got an average FPS of 161. In Fortnite, it got an average FPS of 180. Yes, I know I've been away from the PC content. One, my market is just so dead right now, so PC flipping is not really working out. And two, it kind of just got boring to be honest with you. But stay tuned for episode nine of Flipping PCs Until I Buy a House. That series isn't going anywhere until I buy a house. If you enjoyed this video, then consider watching this video next where I upgraded a $75 office computer into a capable gaming PC.